In the past two years, I've made over $2 million selling AI products and services, ranging from $1,000 chatbots to $100,000 AI SaaS platforms. And if there's one thing that I've learned along the way, it's that getting your pricing strategy right is key to turning those small initial wins into big wins down the line. And today I'm gonna to show you how to do it, even if you're just starting out as a beginner. So in this video, we'll be covering the fundamentals of pricing your AI products and services, the common mistakes beginners make, and the exact steps to go from offering free projects initially to landing profitable deals down the line. So we're gonna be ripping through the slideshow here, which is gonna be available as a free resource on my school community if you wanna jump on there and grab it. So let's get started. Firstly, who am I? If you're new to the channel and don't know who I am, my name is Liam Motley. I'm the founder of Morningside AI and a number of other AI companies. I've started my AI journey in January of 2023. I didn't have any formal education in AI or software development. I was all self-taught. I started off with a YouTube channel, which you're watching right now. That led me into AI consulting. That led me into starting my own AI automation agency, Morningside AI, and really discovering that model as a whole. Then I started my own education business, my AAA accelerator. I've got my own SaaS as well that I built now too. So. I've sold a lot of AI stuff basically, ranging from like $1,000 or $1,500 chatbots all the way up to $100,000 AI SaaS builds, which is the biggest project that I've ever taken on at Morningside AI. And more recently, over the past six months, my businesses collectively have done over a million dollars in revenue, which you can see here, which I put out on my newsletter. So some of you might've seen that, but that's enough about me. Let's get into it. So what are we gonna be covering today? These are the topics. I'm just gonna jump straight into them now. So firstly, why pricing matters? Why is it so important? Well, it's actually the foundation of your agency because we are running a business and you need to charge a certain amount in order to make a profit. Your price and the price that you charge out at needs to be more than the cost that you incur to deliver that service. That's how we make profit and that's how a business works. If you don't make profit, you don't really have a business or some big tech companies would say otherwise. But for businesses that we wanna run, you need to make profit. And at a basic level, the pricing should strategy you use determines how much profit you can make. Secondly, our pricing shows our value. So the amount that we're charging out tells clients how good our services are basically. The more we're charging, clients and people in general see price or, or in or high prices as a proxy for value. So we assume that more expensive things are more valuable inherently. Thirdly, it shapes your work and your life as an agency owner. For example, your pricing strategy determines if you're gonna be taking on one big project every few months or lots of little ones in order to get that revenue number that you're chasing. And also we have things like retainer, so it really shapes the way that your business operates on a day to day. And finally, an effective pricing strategy is what is gonna actually grow your business over time, making sure you have enough profit so that you can reinvest into the key parts of the business that need it, marketing, product, team, etc. So the main thing you need to understand when you're pricing your AI services and solutions is what I call the value formula. So this is a combination of your skills and your experience and those two added together is what determines your value and therefore how much you can charge for your solutions. So this is the frame that I want you to, to look through. It's like, okay, what skills do I have and what experience do I have? Skills are your technical abilities like building chatbots on voice flow, um, automating processes with make.com, etc. all the other stuff I teach on this channel. And then your experience is the actual practical wisdom gained from real projects and delivering that in the real world. By actually taking your skills and applying them in the real world to build AI solutions to businesses all for yourself, you gain a much deeper and richer understanding of what it actually takes to make a successful AI implementation in the real world. And so the experience that you gain through delivering multiple projects, ideally in the same niche or within a, a similar, similar area, um, the experience you gain increases your value to the client by reducing the project risk because you've been through it before and you see the pitfalls and, and the potholes along the way. Um, you can speed up the implementation because you can sort of go straight through and you don't need to hit all those potholes along the way. And finally, you can better align the solutions with the business needs from your experience. So the more experience you gain, that's the way that you can increase your value. And of course, the more skills you have either yourself or within your organization by hiring other people. So the skills and the experience is what goes together to determine your value. And so now that you understand this value formula, just hold that thought because we'll be back to it in a second. Then we get into pricing basics. So we have products and services and services are typically charged by time. So you go to a legal professional and you charge or you ask for, hey, I need these legal services. They're gonna bill you by time. Like how many hours is it gonna take for me to do the thing you need to do? Whereas with products, it's done by perceived or real value. So if you sell me, a, an iPhone or something, I'm not gonna be looking at the number of hours it took you to build it. There's a perceived value of that iPhone of value that I can get out of it. And that's what I'm willing to pay for. So products and services priced very differently. And this is important because if you're selling a product and you want to show value, you need to provide some data on how that value was created in, in a business setting at least. So if I'm selling a AI solution to a business, they want to see, okay, well, if you're putting this website chatbot on my, on my landing page, how many people are gonna engage with it? How many people are gonna 
provide their lead information. How many people have, based on my close rate, is that going to convert into, into closed deals and how much revenue am I going to get? So what is the, the data that shows that there is some value attached to this? Because if there's no data showing that someone's going to use it, then you're kind of just taking a stab in the dark and making up numbers about the value that this product or that this thing will be able to create for the business owner. So in order to prove or communicate value, you need data in most cases. But beginners, when you're starting an AI automation agency, you don't have any first-hand data or proof of results. Therefore, starting out with the AI development services rather than trying to go for products immediately is best. So services, you can charge it based on your time or the time of your developer. So you can start off with no code and low code tools and operate as an agency where you offer your services. Basically, we can build this thing. We're going to uh, calculate how much time it's going to take for us. And then we're going to give you a proposal or a quote based on those hours rather than this product and value based on which you can, we'll talk about later. So getting onto your first project as a beginner with an AI automation agency, you will either be self-delivering or you'll be delegating it to a developer. So I recommend that you start out by delivering them yourself if possible. It gives you a chance to actually build that experience for yourself rather than relying entirely on other people. It is not uh, not a great fit for some people, but ideally you start off with some straightforward projects by posting, say, in my school community. Easy way to get your first client is just go into my school community and post, hey, I know how to do this, or this is what I've been building recently. Anyone interested in something similar, you'll be shocked how much attention you get and how easy it is to get your first client there. I've heard of so many stories like that in the free community. Anyway, so you wanna be getting started with these straightforward projects that you can deliver yourself using no code and low code tools, ideally. So you don't have any costs associated because if you're delivering yourself, you can go to someone and say, hey, I'll work for you for free so that I can build my experience and then become more valuable. And this ties back into the value formula that we mentioned earlier, where initially you have some skills. Yes, you might spend a month or two learning uh, different AI automation tools, but you have no experience, so that limits your value. Therefore, you should be going in to find these straightforward projects where you can offer your services for free in exchange for getting experience, which in the long run will make you much more valuable. So starting off with some straightforward projects that you can deliver yourself using no code and low code tools is ideal so that you don't have any costs. And because you don't have any costs, you're not needing to take money from the client to stay at least at break even. So do your first few projects for free if possible, if you are self-delivering, to build your experience in order to become more valuable. However, if you must hire and you're one of those people who just refuses to do a bit of tinkering themselves and get a bit of hands-on experience, then you should be offering your services at cost in my experience and in my opinion, because since you don't have any experience delivering these kind of projects, it's a bit richer for you to go to these clients and say, hey, look, I want you to pay me to learn on your business, which is basically what you're saying. So it does depend on your situation. If you bring on a developer who has a ton of experience, then technically the experience for your entire organization goes up and the skills also, and therefore you become a little bit more valuable. But as a rule of thumb, when you are getting started, even if you're delegating and hiring a developer, then I recommend that you offer your services at cost just to take the pressure off your back as well. Communicate that clearly with your first client or or a couple of clients so hey look here's what we've built in the past or here's what we've built for ourselves just any kind of proof you can get to show that you know what you're talking about and that there's a reasonable likelihood of you actually seeing this thing for you as a beginner but coming in and offering your services at cost and being like hey i have my developer i'm willing to do this deal for you at cost because i value your testimonial more than the money that this will make me and a really key point here at the end which is by offering them projects at cost clients will be more lenient with you if things fall short of expectations which as a beginner delivering your first few projects is highly likely because you have you sell them the dream just to get the, the deal over the line. And unfortunately you realize it's a lot more difficult to deliver that than, uh, than you expected. So it's completely normal, but the issue is exacerbated if you've charged them a whole bunch of money and you were gonna be trying to pocket a few thousand dollars starting out. And this kind of thing of rushing to the money and trying to skip this learning phase and going straight to selling and making as much money you can out of this AI space is really one of the biggest issues that I'm seeing in beginners approaching this. I was on my free community Q and A in the school, school community this morning. And there was this guy who came up on stage and he was saying, I'm gonna be selling gyms, this, 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 and this. And I was like, well, have you, what have you done? What are your baby steps that you've done to get to this point of selling this big expensive package to them. It's like, oh, well, like, no, I've just, I've just started. Like, how, how hard can it be? But if you're a beginner, just take baby steps and focus on learning before earning because if you try to jump to the earning part, you're just gonna get chewed up and spat out by this AI space and I, I promise you that. So taking it slow and zooming out and seeing this is a long process where you need to build your skills and expertise by doing regular deliveries, even if that means taking less money up front so that you can make more money later on. So it's about staying in the game, not maxing things out immediately as soon as you get in here. So after delivering a few free or low cost projects just to get up your experience, you're now becoming valuable enough that you can start to charge for your services. And when you get to this point, the pricing structure and strategy that I recommend for all beginners is what's called cost plus pricing. This is what I started off with my own agency Morningside AI when we were first getting started back in early 2023. So after you deliver a few free or cost projects, your experience has increased, therefore you are more valuable. If you haven't already hired a developer, now is a good time to do so. And so from now on, you should be adding some profit to your deals with what's known as cost plus pricing. 
In order to do cost plus pricing, you need to estimate the time and resources required to deliver a client's project. So they come to you or you reach out to them and offer a service. And then once you've fully scoped the project and determine what they need and what you're gonna to need to build, you can do an estimate of the time and resources required and how much that's gonna cost you. And then you need to get your developer's hourly rate that you've hired on to take these projects. And that may be from 30 to $50 an hour, depending on how skilled they are and how experienced. And then you can apply a markup to get your final cost. So for example, if the project was estimated to take 60 hours of dev work with your one dev and he or she costs $50 an hour, then when we multiply these two together and then add our markup of say 2X or 3X, I recommend that you start off with 2X. That's what we did at my agency. So you just basically get the developer cost and double it. That's a good starting point for starting to actually make profit on your on your deals and then you can start to increase that to three four five x we eventually got up to six or seven x for some of the larger projects we did um, you can just continue to increase that and that's going to give you a nice healthy margin because you've got the experience needed to justify you charging these prices when it comes to signing the deal and getting the first uh, invoice paid and getting the money in your account there's a few different ways that you can structure the payment terms. The one that I started out with and the one I recommend to most beginners, um, particularly on projects that are kind of under twenty to $30,000, is a 50% upfront and 50% on completion structure. Um, this structure is really good when you're starting out because if you're just doing a 2x markup, like I said, like you've got $1,000 of cost and then $2,000 um, price that you're charging out. Um, when you take that 50% up front, you're immediately covering what your expected costs are going to be. So ideally with the 3x markup, you get a little bit more buffer and you're almost always in profit. Um, but with this structure, if you take that 2x markup, you get the 50% up front, you've covered your costs and then 50% on completion. But as I say here, make sure you set the terms very clearly in the contract on what is defined as completion. So that's a whole other story. I can do a video on contracts if you want, but um, make sure that you've clearly stated what the end uh, deliverable or end result is so you don't get pissed around on that final payment and just to reiterate the most important thing out of this whole video that i want you to take away is that experience is more valuable than money when you're starting out um, it's really the only way to succeed in this long term and if you don't understand that you don't change your approach you're going to run into failure after failure after failure because you're trying to shoot too high for your current skill level and then basically causing a whole bunch of issues for yourself and your business and your clients too make sure that you're taking on low cost or free projects to build case studies and experience early on collect testimonials from these early projects and the data of before and after of the real impact that you're providing to your clients so that you can prove that you can create value for other businesses too. Uh, and my final point here is that every idiot right now thinks that they're an AI expert just because they play around with ChatGPT and Claude. Um, despite having no experience of actually delivering these things for businesses. So successful deliveries early on, and even in the later stages of your uh, AI automation agency journey, these successful deliveries are really the gold in the space and should be your number one goal early on. It's just, can I get a handful of successful deliveries under my belt to see things through to completion, to work with clients and get experience in dealing with them, and then have the data that I can use to go and increase the prices of my services as you continue to take on more clients. Quick recap of the key takeaways in this video. We have experience coming first, prioritize gaining experience and case studies over immediate profits, which is easy to do as a beginner. Um, take free or low cost projects to build experience and ultimately build trust and proof. Secondly, cost plus pricing. So after a few successes, you can add profit to your rate by using cost plus pricing with a 2X markup initially. Thirdly, structure your deals with a 50% upfront and 50% on completion uh, structure to cover costs and reduce risks initially. Number four, experience plus skills equals value. Your skills and experience define your value. Increase your rates as you grow. And finally, keep it simple. Start with basic no code or low code projects, depending on your skill level. If you're a developer coming in, obviously you can jump up a bit higher in order to minimize your costs and reduce the complexity of your builds and really accelerate your learning before you start tackling complex projects, which are definitely out there. And this video is only really just scratching the surface on AI automation agency pricing. There's a lot more to it, retainers versus upfronts, pricing by milestone, cost plus versus value-based pricing, data collection for price maxing and more. There's so much left to what I really had to exclude a lot out of this just to keep this short and sweet for beginners. But if you want to learn about these topics, you can firstly subscribe to the channel because I might make some videos on it later. Actually, drop a comment below if you want me to make any of those videos or these parts of it that you're particularly interested in. And if you haven't already, join my free school community, which is my first link in the description below, where I've got a free course on starting an AI automation agency that I've just released. So everything you need to start your AI automation agency is in there. So if you haven't already joined the school, first thing in the description, that's all for the video, guys. I'll put another one up here if you want to learn more about how to hire your first developer, which is the next problem after this. Uh, but that's all for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.